What's up, guys? This is Dark Blue, a gamer who loves Souls-like games, looter games, and every game that involves build making. Recently, there are so many players asking about how to get a particular gear, and I can tell that many players don't have enough knowledge about the random world generation yet, which might make their treasure hunt less efficient. So here we are. I decided to choose world generation as a topic as my first mechanics analysis video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's dive right into it. So the world generation mechanics of Remnant 2 can be divided into several levels, and let's start with the highest one, world template. A world template determines a lot of things in a world. A part of which is the main storyline. This includes the world boss, a set of corresponding main quests and corresponding main story locations. So, if you are after some loot that relate to a certain main storyline, you have to find the right world template. Otherwise, you are only wasting your time. So, how to know what template it is? Just check out the background image when you attempt to teleport at the red crystal. Each template has a specific image. Currently, there are two templates for each world, so you can just keep rerolling an adventure until you get the template you want. But there is more about world template. In fact, it also determines the world structure of the whole world. But first, we have to know what world structure means. Maps in Remnant 2 can be divided into three types. Dungeons, open zones, and main story locations. Dungeons are the rather independent maps with one big crystal at its entrance and only one entrance or one entrance plus one exit. Open zones, or you can call them big maps or overworld or whatever, have one crystal at its entrance, one crystal at its center, and several exits that take you to dungeons. Main story locations are the most diverse. They may be an independent map, but can also be part of an open zone. A world, no matter what template it belongs to, always contains two open zones and five to six dungeons. In most world templates, you have to progress through two open zones consecutively to complete your main quest. But in some special cases such as the Two King template of Lawson, one open zone is actually optional. Now let's take a look at the teleporting page. Well, we, we, will took, we will look at them and the map a lot in this video. So here I mark main story locations with blue, dungeons with orange, and center crystals of open zones with green. Now I additionally highlight entrance crystals of two open zones with some special marks. This is because on one hand, you can see them as part of the open zones. There are no particular events bounded to them. But on the other, well, both their name and terrain are fixed and determined by the world template, so they can be seen as main story locations as well. I just want to point it out so we don't have any misunderstanding here. Now let's move on and explain how a world template determines the world structure. First of all, the exact locations of these teleporting targets are mostly fixed across each generation. Well, maybe some ex locations of some uh, dungeon entrances will differ. The main story locations are always the same, of course. But as for dungeons and center crystals, you can see their locations as slots. In each generation, only proper maps will be put into these slots. For example, this slot is always center crystals. But what center crystal it is, this is random. And then, the overall terrain of open zones are fixed. Dungeon entrances, main story locations, center crystals, and entrance crystals always have the same relative location. And in case you haven't noticed yet, this relative location is identical to the relative location of their corresponding circles on the teleporting page. So here is a trick of how to find a particular direction. Taking the Seeker's Keys template of Narud as an example, in this story you need to look for three keys. The first key is found within 10 seconds after you enter the world. The second one is always at the end of the dungeon to the east of the first open zone, 
and the last one is always at the end of the dungeon to the north of the second open zone. Let's say now I'm at the second open zone, but I don't know which direction is north, so I can keep exploring until both entrance crystal and center crystal are shown on the map. Now I can toggle this map so that it matches the teleporting page, which means letting center crystal be to the east of the entrance, and now I can see where north is. So that's what you need to know about wall template, and it's time to move to a lower level, dungeons and the center crystals. There is one thing they have in common, they are events that are bounded to teleporting crystals, which means you can know what event it is by simply looking at the name of the crystal. For example, this Isha dungeon is named as Expanding Glade, and this tells me that it must be a floating forest and the boss is a root archer. If we compare them, we can see center crystals are simpler events as it contains only a small region. But dungeons are something different, and can't be simply summarized as random dungeons. First, you need to know that dungeons have different numbers of exits. Single Lexi dungeons have only one exit, which is in fact the entrance through which you come in. Double exit dungeons, they have two exits. One is the entrance, and the other leads you to another map. Whether a dungeon is single exit or double exit is fixed, and what type of dungeons suit a certain dungeon slot is also fixed and determined by the world template. For example, Colton's Kiln is a double exit dungeon, so it can never spawn in this single exit dungeon slot that I mark. Then, dungeons have different styles. For example, Lawsome dungeons can be Drain Streets, Drain Sewers, or Fey Palace. Again, as you may already have guessed, the styles of dungeons that suit a certain slot is determined by the world template and fixed. So this Lawsome template again. This dungeons on the left side must be in Drain styles but both Drain Street and Drain Sewer are possible. This single exit dungeons on the right side can be in any style. And in this particular slot, it must be a Fey Palace style double exit dungeon. And there are only two such dungeons, Gilded Chambers and Shattered Gallery. Yes, there are only two possibilities, much to our surprise. Now you can see, although they are called random, these dungeons are very much restricted by the world template. And as a result, we can come up with strategies that help us find a specific event, which I will show you in the final section of this video. Now time to move to the next level. Notice what's missed in our current world. We have entrance crystal, center crystal, and main story locations. But what about the terrain that connects them? Indeed, our next topic is terrain. Terrain is in fact sliced into chunks, which is the atomic unit of terrain generation. It's most likely that you have seen the same terrain in different locations. That's because this exact chunk is used for multiple times. The essential property of a chunk is its connection. For example, this chunk may look a bit complicated, but it's in essence this ship. Of course, there are other chunks with the same connection, and they are replaceable with each other in generation. This is why you can see different terrain even with the same world template. According to my preliminary observation, some dungeons or open zones have fixed connection, which means in each generation, a chunk at a particular position always has the same connection, but others may even have varying connection. Well, there isn't much to say about regular chunks, so let's move to event chunks, which is new in Remnant 2 and very interesting. Some chunks are bounded with events. Some events are obvious, like the flame puzzle in Lawson, but others are really hidden like the coffin hidden location in Asia. All these event chunks, however, contain fixed rewards, 
For example, this flame puzzle gives you white or black pawn ring depending on your uh, how you solve it. And this reward doesn't change when this event chunk is in different dungeons. For this part, you can see it has the same property as dungeons and center crystals. But differently, event chunks are not bounded with teleporting crystals. You cannot simply look at the crystal's name and see what's waiting for you, but have to actually explore the dungeon. However, event chunks still follow some rules, which are helpful. First, event chunks only spawn in dungeons but not open zones. Then, no more than one event chunk per dungeon. So if you already discover one but it's not what you are looking for, just leave this dungeon. Finally, event chunks only spawn in dungeons of specific styles. For example, the flame puzzle is only found in Fey Palace dungeons, and the coffin hidden location is only found in infected building dungeons. So if a dungeon has an incompatible style to what you are after, there is no need to explore it. We have finally come to the last and the lowest level. Now we have both crystals and rain that connects them, so what's still missing here? Well, resources you can pick up from the ground, right? So this is the last level. Well, you can count enemies in as well, but I don't count them as part of world generation. Some resources are not limited. This includes irons indicated by yellow light and of course chests. They are literally everywhere. Then we have limited resources, trade books, blue light, only one per dungeon or open zone, accessories, purple light, only one per dungeon or open zone, and key items, red light, related with events or main quest. Since they have limited number, you need to search more carefully if you haven't found them. But once you find them all, you know there are going to be more to expect, so you can explore this area more carefully. Of course, there are simulacrums, but I'm not sure if they only spawn in main quest locations or anywhere in the world, so I won't draw any conclusion for now. About accessories, there is one more thing I want to emphasize. Accessories are bounded with each world. For example, Lawsome awesome accessories can only be found in Lawsome, awesome, not any other world. And in the same time, in Lawsome, awesome, there are only Lawsome awesome accessories. Finally, let's put our knowledge into application. You will find what's taught in this video is really useful. First, let's see a frequently asked question, how to find engineer. The most exact and scientific way to put it is like this. In the second open zone of Nauru, you may wonder, my second open zone is called Ian Vault, not Timeless Horizon. But this doesn't matter, as world template don't influence engineer. You may also wonder, well, my center crystal is called Titan's Reach, not Extraction Hub. But this doesn't matter at all, as center crystals don't influence engineer. Well, when you look at different guys, you'll need to know that not everyone knows exactly how random worlds are generated. So. What people say may not be truly exact. You need to identify what part is random while what part is fixed, and most importantly, what part is your target loot really bounded to. Then I shall show you some examples of how I plan to hunt for certain loots in Lawson. First, I still have an altar kill of Nightweaver to collect. Well, this is simple. I can just keep rerolling the world until it starts at Morrow Parish. Then there is another kill of Huntress, where you use Dreamcatcher upon her. So what do we know about Huntress? It's a center crystal event. To look for a certain center crystal, Nightweaver template is better than the Two King template, since I can see the center crystal after a very short distance from my starting crystal. And finally, I have a Golden Ribbon to collect. Golden Ribbon is got from an event chunk, which spawns only in Fey Palace dungeon. So my choice is the Two King template, since the two dungeons close to the entrance are all Fey style and thus easier to grind. I can quickly go inside and check if the Ribbon chunk is there. But if I'm in the Nightweaver template, 
I have to go across half of the world before going into any Fei dungeons, so it's not optimal. Now as you can see, understanding the world generation mechanics can really help you collect gears much more efficiently. So that's all about world generation. I can say it's 100% correct, but I think most part of it is. Hope it's helpful for you. If you like my story and if you want to drop me into depth of games, just like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you around.